that compares to something like what six times that amount in Ireland. Yes, yeah. Which, you know, it's quite, you know, dramatic, the difference there. So, you know, we're really looking to the government. You know, the government uh, made a commitment. It, it came in with a part of the ALP party platform to have a national plan of action. I know that the Minister for uh, Women, Tanya Plibersek, is personally incredibly committed to this. Uh, but, you know, they have made a commitment to fund it in their first term. We're worried that, you know, we're coming up to the budget, it's gone a bit quiet and we're looking uh, to the government to actually really uh, up their game and put significant funding into this. Are you concerned that in the current economic climate this might be one of those election promises the government decides it can't keep, at least at this stage? Well, the feedback that we've had from supporters is that you know, the government's aware that actually this is a, a small uh, financial ask in comparison to, to the many asks that are out there at, at the moment. Uh, and you know, it does make economic sense. I mean, domestic violence is costing the country over $8 billion uh, at the moment. And, and if we were actually uh, to implement a national plan of action successfully, in the long term, it would actually save the government money. But really, it's not about economics. This is about a basic human right. Yeah? Women are suffering from serious human rights abuses. And the government has a legal responsibility to do something about that. They've just uh, signed the optional protocol in relation to uh, CEDAW, which is the Convention to Eliminate the Discrimination Against Women. So, you know, they've made that pledge. And, you know, it's up to the government now to actually put its money where, you know, that signing was. You're also campaigning for the introduction of a Human Rights Act, yet many people in Australia think that we live in a democracy, our rights are essentially protected. How important is this? How much would it contribute both, say, in terms of the specific issues like violence against women and more generally in terms of protections for the, the, the community? Australia is a fabulous country. That's why I came here. That's why I'm an Australian citizen. And, you know, I, I, I love this country. But, you know, we don't have a Human Rights Act, which means, you know, not all our rights are protected. And for people who were in Sydney when APEC uh, was happening, that they'll realise that actually, you know, their rights are not always protected. And we had, you know, 40 pieces of legislation around anti-terrorism come in. Come in. You know, if you look uh, around the world, you know, we're the only uh, Western democracy that doesn't have a, a Human Rights Act. And, and what's really interesting is that, you know, there's just been the findings because the UK did implement uh, an act uh, five years ago. Uh, and what that research has, has shown, that actually it's, it's ordinary people who've benefited from having a, a Human Rights Act. It's the elderly. You know, people who are about to move into uh, a residential accommodation for the first time after living, you know, uh, happily married for 50 years. They go into the old people's uh, home, you know, they're bringing their double bed and they're told, oh no, it's against our policies, you'll have to sleep in uh, separate beds. You know, by actually taking, saying, you know, this is against my human rights and there is a Human Rights Act, that old well, people's home has turned around and realised, oh, actually, we need to make sure that people can have dignity uh, and respect and they have been allowed to, you know, quite rightly share a bed. You know, other examples that have been really powerful and hit me um, was people who were in hospital. You know, there were examples in the UK and sadly this happens also here in Australia where hospitals have got into the practice of feeding people their breakfast while they're on the toilet. You know, when the families found this out, they said, you know, this is against the Human Rights Act. So it's those kinds of situations that are happening here in Australia, which is why Amnesty International believes it's vitally important that there's a, a Human Rights Act here. It's to make sure that everybody's human rights are respected and that there's a legal framework to ensure people are protected. Of course, many people might say these things simply come down to common sense and common decency. Do we really need a Human Rights Act to ensure that people get what the rest of us simply take for granted? 
Well, you, you may say that, but if, you, if we look at Australia's recent past with children being born in detention centres, with the Pacific Solution, with the Dr Hanif case, where actually you know, he was held for 23 hours in solitary confinement, he was held for, for weeks without charge, you know, people's human rights uh, were taken advantage of. You know, it's very clear, you know, those kids in the detention centres, you know, their human rights uh, were abused. The survey that you alluded to before shows that there is significant support for the idea of a Human Rights Act, that people support the idea, but is there really strong pressure for it? Uh, what I'm saying there is the community really pressing for this? Well, what we've found is that there's a huge amount of interest uh, around the consultation and, and you know, we were really pleased that the government uh, have opened up the, the consultation process. Over 2,000 of our supporters have already participated. They've written submissions uh, and sent them off to uh, the committee. Uh, Amnesty International obviously is doing its own submission and we're encouraging our members and the community at large to participate in the, in the whole process. It's really important that actually human rights are discussed here in Australia. You know, we, we've seen positive strides forward but we've seen some steps back and we need to make sure that we continue you know, the positive journey to make sure everybody has equality and justice and dignity. And, and that's why uh, the human rights consultation is really important and, and that's why you know, Amnesty International wants a, a Human Rights Act here in Australia. In terms of your Violence Against Women campaign, would the introduction of a Human Rights Act actually contribute to this process? Would, uh, would it actually assist, if you like, as part of the suite of things that you think need to be done? What a Human Rights do, uh, Act does is it means that whenever there's new legislation that comes forward, it, it's looked at through a, a, a human rights lens. So you know, what happens, for example, in the UK is they have a cross-parliamentary uh, committee with some external advisers. So any new piece of legislation that's going before the House is looked at and you know, it's examined from a, a, a human rights dimension. Uh, and that's something that, you know, would be incredibly beneficial here in Australia and that's why it would benefit uh, any legislation in relation to stopping violence against women. A lot of this of course is driven by the willingness of women victims to act, to go to the authorities. But we really don't have an environment, a culture if you like, that strongly supports that, do we? That encourages people, that gives them the level of support that they need. How do you change that? Well, I mean, one of the key aspects is obviously prevention, and certainly when we looked uh, around the world, you know, there were some really good examples of uh, how countries had improved the prevention. So, for example, in Scotland, you know, they've had a huge zero tolerance campaign. You know, there are other countries which are making sure it starts right in the schools. I mean, sadly, you know, recent research has shown that young children, young boys actually think it's all right to hit girls. So, you know, we need to start ensuring that right from the word go, there is zero tolerance to uh, violence against women. But then, you know, there are other aspects to ensure that uh, violence against women stops. You know, we've talk, talked about the fact that the provision of services to make sure that women have somewhere to go. You know, if they have nowhere safe to go, then they're going to stay in those places where they're being abused. So, you know, there needs to be safe houses, there needs to be effective 24-hour care, there needs to be places where women can take their children. You know. You know, if there aren't those places, then you know, women will stay in situations where, to be honest, they'll get a big thumping every night.